Hello guys, my name is Lucas and welcome. Today we're going to be learning how to get the items from our users and display them on our game. We're going to start by making the graphics and then we're going to learn how to make the PHP files required to do so. Before we begin I want to deeply thank all of my subscribers and especially those of you who support me on Patreon. And please let's give a warm welcome to our newest patron, La Porte de Dot. I don't know if I said that correctly, but thank you so much for joining our patron list. It means the world to me. If you have any questions, please let me know and I will try my best to help you. And if you would like to help me and expand this list a little bit more, remember that there is a link in the description to my patron page where you can support me financially. Thank you so much guys. Now let's begin with the video. So here inside the canvas, inside the background, I'm going to create a new empty object. I'm just going to call it gameplay or something that you can recognize as the information of our user. We could just call it that user info. I think that's a little bit better. And I'm going to scale it up all the way. Alt shift, remember, can make you expand it so that it occupies all of its parent, which in this case is the background. So here we're going to have maybe a user picture. So I'm going to create a image. And remember that we downloaded a whole GUI package from the asset store called Simple Fantasy. And I think I have uh, some graphics that I would like to use from it here. We can just choose it from here. We have this guy here, it's a character demo, the character bar, I think that's a demo too. Mm -hmm. I would like to, yeah, there's the player frame. We're going to have this first as a reference. We can set native size and then just drag it to the side. And we can scale it down by pressing shift so it keeps the same ratio. By the way, when we log in, we're going to turn this off. So don't worry about that being there. And we're going to be able to see our user info and all of our items. User place holder. We're going to work on that a little bit later. Now I'm going to create another empty object here and we're just going to scale it up um, like that. And I'm going to add a vertical layout. So add component, vertical layout, and we're going to add something inside. Uh, before that, I'm going to change the name to items. And inside here, I'm going to create just an image so that we can uh, see how the vertical layout is controlling the size of our object. I'm going to change this to something like item. And items here, we're going to align it to the middle, upper center here. So it is there. And we're going to control the width. So it expands all of our width. And we're going to have some padding from the left, maybe 20. That's too much. 10 um, from the right 10, from the top 10 as well. All around is going to be 10. And the spacing between each item is going to be 10 as well. So if I duplicate this, um, I don't want to expand them. Right now, child force expand means that they're going to try to occupy all of the size of this parent. But if we remove this and I duplicate this item, you see that they just go one by one. Now inside these items, we want to have some text. So we're going to have something like the name and the description, the price, all those things. So inside here, item, I'm going to create a UI element text. I'm going to call it name. We're going to place it uh, over here. We're probably going to have the image on a square here. So that's why I'm putting it here. Let's call this something like just item. Make this a little bit bigger. Let's make it something like 25. And let's make uh, the price. I'm going to duplicate this price. Let's put it over here. And we need to have a coin image as well so that they know it's uh, the price. And one more thing that we're going to add is the description. So here, description. And we're going to place it down here underneath the item name and the item price. We're just going to expand it like that. And we're going to give it a long description, something like this is an item and you can use it or sell it and it is nice. 
and yummy. And you see that we don't see the second line of our text and that's because maybe the size is a little bit too big for the description. So you could either scale down the size of your font or you could have a best fit so that it will try to choose a size from 2 to 70 and fill it nicely. So there we go. Uh, we Later on we're going to add the image but not right now. And we're going to use this item as a prefab that we're going to create based on how many items we download from our database. So let me remove these two and duplicate this one. So I'm going to go back to assets. I'm going to create a folder called prefabs. Or actually this folder should be in our resources folder. So we don't have it. Let's create that one. Resources. So that later we can load it dynamically from our scripts. Now here we're going to create another one called prefabs. And inside here, we're going to drag this item so that we have an item prefab. We could add the image. I think it's a good idea to add it now. So what I was talking about is that there will be an image here. That's going to be the item image. And I think we can find something as a placeholder, maybe this crystal icon, so that we have an item and it looks nice. So now let me destroy these two. I'm going to apply this. And we're going to, no, we don't need to drag it because we applied it. So it's there. And now if we drag this item inside here, you'll see that they start to get listed out. You see that it went outside our parent and we can fix that with a mask and a scroll view, but we're going to work on that later. Um, I think this is enough for showing our items. We're just going to have three items in our server anyways. And we need to get our user information here. So let's change this up here. The image of our user, so they can choose a character or something. So let's add an image and that image is going to be there. Remember that is just a reference, what is in the background. So here we're going to choose the, where is it? There we go, yeah, that's the frame. Let's rename this to user picture frame. And we also need another image for this rectangle here. Sorry, this trapezoid, trapezoid. I don't know how to say that word. Um, let's call it uh, user info rectangle. You know what, this user info, I don't like that. I'm going to call this user info. And this is going to be called user profile, something like that. So now here, this user info, I want to change this image. I'm going to put it over here and I'm going to choose uh, this one, character box. We're going to scale it so that it looks nice. There we go. And we need to have this over here so that the, not there, here, so that the ring is on top of that. And here we need to add the picture of our user. I don't have a picture for that right now, so I'm just going to add a empty picture, an empty image, and let's make it another color something like that, so that now we can hide the user placeholder. So our user is going to be there. Actually, our user should be behind the ring, so it should be something like this, and the ring on top of it. Yeah, something like that. So maybe this is user picture, and we can place this inside there. Uh-huh. Now we need to have the name and the level of our user and maybe all the coins we have. So let's put that information there and we're ready to create our PHP files. So let's create a text here. I'm going to place it there. This is going to be username. I'm going to make it a bit smaller like that. Maybe some of that. Let's call this username. And it's duplicated. It, put it down here. And this is going to be the level that we have a user level right here level and we have the coins coins so down there we're going to have our currency and there we go now this also has to change dynamically based on our account information and we're going to be adding that as well same as we do with the items Great, now our UI is prepared. 
for getting our items information and our users information. So now we just need to create the PHP scripts and get them from Unity using some C Sharp scripts. I don't want to make a video too long, so I'm going to upload this video together with part two, where we're going to be focusing on only the C Sharp and the PHP scripts. So thank you guys for watching this video. Please remember to like it, leave a comment if you have any questions of what you saw me doing here, and don't forget to tell your friends about my